So that's my stopping distance. When you're an expert at threshold braking, you become proficient at using the minimum amount of space. So if we want it to be like a little more exciting, maybe stand just like right here for the next shot. And get like, yeah, yeah, it gets super close. Like my front tire won't even graze you, like right there. I blame Ban Ki Moon. See, anti-lock brakes are mandatory in many countries, which is fair enough, except for where slowing down requires a skid. On low traction surfaces, anti-lock brakes just keep rolling until you roll into your cameraman, which is why there are provisions for disabling ABS off-road again, fair enough. However, and this is where I blame Ban Ki-moon, ABS is legally required to rearm itself on every ignition cycle, according to United Nations Global Technical Regulation No. 3, which is a hellish law. I get what they're trying to prevent. Some idiot goes off-road, disables his ABS, forgets his own settings when he rejoins the pavement, then grabs a hand fist of brakes and dies. But in trying to save the moron from himself, the law hurts a more conscientious rider, who turns his ABS off, wants it off, but is screwed when the bike automatically rearms itself and careens off a dirt road because the tires refuse to lock up. Our law should presume intelligence rather than incompetence. The safest place for ABS settings to be is wherever the rider decided to leave them. Now picture this. You're cruising down Pennsylvania Avenue when you hit the crush of traffic. Stop here and you're liable to get rear-ended by the first tweeting twit or senile septuagenarian to drive up behind you. On a motorcycle, that's fatal. The solution is lane filtering, allowing motorcyclists to pass between cars when traffic is moving slower than 30 kilometers an hour and the motorcycle is moving less than 10 kilometers an hour faster than traffic. Not to be confused with lane splitting, which requires suicidal faith in other people's driving and is rightfully illegal. The problem is that slow lane filtering is illegal too, in much of the states, in Canada, and a few similarly primitive countries. Why? If we stack bikes here, they're sitting ducks, and the jam is bigger for everybody. Whereas if we let motorcycles filter through, then the jam is smaller for everyone. Plus, all these cars have seen the bikes go by. That's a better motorcycle awareness program than the ads your government pays for. We also avoid overheating air-cooled engines, which happens when they stand still in traffic. Not to mention that every vehicle gets zero miles per gallon and suffocates a baby seal when it's not moving. The only reason filtering hasn't been legalized is safety. And yes, there are studies to show how low-speed accidents increase when cars and motorcycles are in such close proximity. There are also studies that show how filtering decreases a rider's chance of being seriously injured, and even more statistics that prove that motorcycle accidents per capita are lower in the countries that allow filtering. My professional opinion is that anyone pulling safety conclusions from the current body of research might as well pull them from their ass. Meaning this is the true reason lane filtering is illegal. Crab is like, if I'm gonna die, we all gonna die. Like crabs in a bucket, a car driver mentality is if I can't get out, neither can you. And perhaps it's unsurprising that the people who drive boxes can't think outside of them, but these are the same folk who complain about traffic, who call themselves the green generation. Hypocrites. You want fewer cars on the road? Then legalize filtering so there's actually some motivation for commuters to switch to a bike. Now, motorcyclists can't turn right. Crashes on right-hand curves heavily outweigh those on left-handers, a phenomenon that also plagues cars as noted by the Association for the Advancement of Automotive Medicine. It's true, motorists suck at turning right. I'm not an ambi-turner. It's a problem I had since I was a baby. 
Stupid as it sounds, the behavior is logically explainable. Compared to a rider curving left, the right-hander always has a tighter radius and therefore requires a lower speed. Then there's our sight line. When we look ahead through a left curve, we have no choice but to notice the lane of oncoming traffic. Whereas when we look through a right curve, we're blind to whatever else is happening on the road. There's a psychological factor too. I won't take left-handers quickly because I know if I overshoot them, I'm going into the trees. Whereas riders are more likely to push themselves in right-handers because subconsciously they're aware that they can drift wide without running out of pavement. So right curves are more dangerous. And the reasons trace back to our most fundamental law that we must drive on the right side of the road. Now, before you T-sippers get all chuffed, know that riding on the left wouldn't help. That just creates the same dangers in reverse. Hmm. There's no universal solution, like American politics, left and right are both undesirable, but going up the middle isn't an option. There is a personal solution, however. Just be more careful in right-hand curves. Thanks for watching.